All right. So uh, I'm Principal Stevenson. For those of you who have not met me before, this is my fourth year here at Houston Elementary. And so um, we're working to ensure that we are doing our best to keep yeah. kids safe as they return face to face. Um, and we've worked hard in the virtual setting so far. But with that being said, uh, we're now prepared to start face-to-face -face instruction on Monday, October 26th. So I want to thank everybody in advance um, for your support, your patience, your flexibility during this time, especially as we embark on this new path. Um, so at this time, please mute. So everybody should be muted. I'm going to let in a few more people. How do I mute it? Let's see. I end up going to the car. Mommy, mommy. Let me check. Hi. Kayla. Um, if you do have questions or anything like that, you can always email me at Tatanisha Stevenson at LancasterISD.org. Also, if you have questions tonight as I'm going through, you can just put those in the chat and I have staff members who are strategically answering any questions that you have. So we're going to start just with some helpful reminders. Oops, go back. So we ask that you follow our district procedures to prevent and, and mitigate the spread of COVID-19. And so this includes daily self-screening for your child. So when you are uh, at home before your child leaves, if your child is showing any signs of sickness or they're not feeling well, you wanna go ahead and make sure that that child stays at home. If you have a thermometer at home, go ahead and check your child's temperature. And um, if they have a temperature above 99.4, then that means that they will probably need to stay at home, okay? So we want you to do some self-screening. And um, I'm going to also show you a screener later on in the PowerPoint that you'll see what specific questions you need to be asking about students. Um, next, you want to make sure that your child is wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. Uh, by the way, before I go on, I'm going to drop the link to the newsletter in the chat. Um, and so If you click on that link, everything I'm saying is in that newsletter. And for our Spanish speakers, it translates everything. So everything I'm going through is in that newsletter that I sent via email. So I put that in the chat so you can click on that and follow along with me in Spanish if you need to. Uh, secondly, we wanna make sure that students are wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. So uh, students will be required to come to school wearing a mask, and I'm going to talk about what, um, what that looks like um, later on in the PowerPoint. Make sure that students are washing hands appropriately and using hand sanitizer. Students will be expected to bring their technology devices and chargers when reporting to campus. And that technology device that we're talking about is the one that was issued by the district. Okay, so we don't want personal devices brought to school. We want them to bring the district issue technology device to school. Um, all students returning face to face must also bring supplies in any issue textbook. Um, so they can bring backpacks. I know that was a question so that they can bring their textbooks, their uh, laptop and the charger. 
Also, make sure that students are adhering to the dress code for school. So if your student is coming back face to face, then you need to make sure that you go to the district website, www.lancasterisd.org, where it says parent portal and click on uh, school supplies or dress code right there and it'll tell you what your child needs. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to see who's muted, not muted. So let, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second so I can find them. Senora Marta Savala. Oop, I muted you, Miss Vasquez. I'm sorry. Yes, I was just, I was just talking Go to ahead. the parents with my mute. Si todos pueden, por favor, uh, mantener el micrófono apagado para que se pueda escuchar lo que dice la directora. Gracias. Ok. Thank you. So far, I have a question. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat, and I'm going to save time for us to ask questions at the oh. end. Ok. Thank you. So if you can put it in the chat or just hold on for a second, and then we'll work to answer your question. Sí. Uh, so we have 349 students that are returning face to face so far, um, which is about 50% of our uh, students. So that means that um, we have to do things a little differently because we have 50% of our students that are returning. So I just want to know about how many we have coming back. Okay. Let me try to figure out who this is that's unmuted, y'all. I'm sorry. It's Eileen Martinez. I see the name. It's quite a few of them. Got it. Okay. All right. All right. So if you decide after tonight that you are having second thoughts about uh, your child coming back face to face and you determine on the side that you wanted them to come back face to face, you need to email Damien Gray at LancasterISD.org. One of our staff members will put that email address in the chat. But you want to email him if you change your mind about your student coming back face to face. Okay. And they'll let us know. Yeah. This is the survey timeline. Most of you have already completed the survey because your child is coming back face to face on the 26th. If you're still considering, then there will be another survey that comes out on November 30th. And then your child will be able to return on December the 14th. But once you fill out the survey and say you want your child to come back face to face, that's the only time you have to fill that out. You don't have to complete the survey every time. Unless you want to change the status. All right. This is the COVID screener that I referred to earlier. So the questions you should be asking your student each day is in the past 14 days, have you had close contact with an individual who is lab confirmed with COVID? Secondly, have you recently been tested for COVID-19 and are awaiting results? And third, have you recently begun experiencing any of the following in a way that is not normal for you? So you can see those specific um, symptoms there and just make sure that you ask yourself and screen your student before they come to school. If any of those answers are yes, then the student must remain off campus until you're cleared to return. Hey, I'm gonna let a few people in. Give me one second here.
So to help us uh, mitigate the spread of COVID-19, help us by reporting any exposure to COVID-19. And so I'm gonna show you a COVID-19 case reporting form, but this reporting form needs to be used if your child or someone in your home has tested positive for COVID-19, if your child is experiencing COVID-19 symptoms, or if your child has had close contact exposure to someone that has tested positive for COVID-19. So I'm going to uh, show you where to find that form. So if you're on the website, www.lancasterisd.org, Click on COVID-19 right here, and then you scroll down to the bottom. It says COVID-19 case report form, and then you're going to click here if you need to report. Ms. Camino, can you give me a thumbs up if you see the COVID-19 case report page? Okay. All right. Okay, so this is student protective equipment or PPE. So students will be required to wear a clean mask, cotton or surgical and face shields when social distancing is not possible. So if your student doesn't have a mask or a face shield, don't worry about that. We will provide students with mask and face shields. Um, the, um, Please clean or disinfect reusable masks daily. Mask and face shields will be provided to students that need them. Um, our staff will monitor and make sure students are in compliance. So if students are refusing to wear a mask or a face shield, then there are consequences. It's just like a part of our dress code. So we need to make sure that they're wearing the mask and the face shield. Mask or face shields that are unclean or unusable will be discarded in a safe manner and face shields will be sanitized daily and remain on campus. So we have places set aside in each classroom for face shields to stay and remain on campus. Please make sure that your student is wearing his or her mask uh, properly. So you can see the example here, they shouldn't be wearing the mask under the nose, the nose should be covered. It shouldn't be hanging from their ear. It shouldn't be down under their chin. You wanna make sure that they are properly wearing the mask as it is shown here. These are the required items, the things that students need to bring with them to school starting on Monday. So first they need their fully charged district issued technology device or Chromebook with the charger. So that's very important. They're gonna take that back and forth to campus each day. Parents, we are begging you to make sure that those are charged up because one thing we don't have is uh, in order to social distance, it's gonna be kind of difficult for us to charge every device as soon as a student gets here. So you need to make sure you charge the device e each night and send it in the backpack with the charger. Students need to also bring their textbooks. So the textbooks that you guys picked up when we started virtual learning, those need to be put in the backpack so that they can bring those and use those at school. We're also asking that students bring their earbuds or headphones because while the students are here face to face, the teacher is also teaching students that are virtual learning. So they'll need earbuds or headphones. They will also need any school supplies. So the school supply list is also on the website. So you will need to provide your student with school supplies. Am I saying they need to have everything on Monday? No, but I will go ahead and communicate with your teacher and ask them what, uh, what, does, what does your child need specifically for Monday? Students may bring a backpack, just make sure that that is also clean and also bring the mask. So they should come to school wearing the mask. We're gonna provide the face shield when they need to uh, bring a mask. 
again, students uh -oh. should not bring a personal device to campus. They'll be issued a district device to use on campus. And I, we won't be sharing any supplies for students that are on campus. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Even these, really. Like okay. So let's talk about student arrival. So the doors will open at 7.30. So parents were asking you to please make sure you don't bring a child to school before 7.30. The doors are gonna open at 7.30 for student arrival. If your child is a car rider, if you're bringing your child to school in a car, they're gonna be screened and their temperature taken while they're still in the car before they exit the vehicle. So if your child shows that they have a temperature, they will stay in the car with you and then you will take them home. Students should arrive wearing a mask with all required items. Car riders, walkers, and faculty will enter and exit through specific doors. So this is very important. In the past, everybody that was a car rider entered through the front door. That's not gonna happen anymore because we're trying to do social distancing. So if you're a fifth grader, your parent or your child is a fifth grader, they're going to come through the front door. If your child is in pre-K or first grade, they're gonna to come to what's called the blue door which is on the Southeast side. So if you're facing the playground, it's the door that's to the right. The red door is for kinder and second graders. If you're facing the playground, that's the door on the left. The green door will be for third grade. The orange door is for fourth grade general ed. And those students who have Miss Rodriguez or Miss Rangel, they will, you will be able to take your student and drop them off right at the portable, okay? So I've asked the teachers to try their best to communicate to you where that door is and what it looks like. So when you come on Monday, some of you will be coming in the front of the building. Some of you will enter on the side where the parking lot is. And some of you will enter at the back where buses and daycare are and go all the way around so your child can have the shortest distance to walk in their particular door. So there's a lot of kinks that we'll have to work through on that first day, but by the time we get through the week, then uh, every student and parent should know where they're gonna drive in and where that student is gonna enter. Breakfast will be served in the classroom, 7.30 to 8 a.m. Classes begin at 8 a.m. and families with multiple children may enter through the door of the youngest sibling. So if you have, for example, a fourth grader and a kindergartner, you, both of your children can enter through the kindergarten door. So we're not asking you to drop off at different doors. All of your children can come in the door of the youngest sibling. And teachers, I, I see your messages about people waiting in the waiting room. If they don't have a name attached to their phone or whatever they're trying to get in, I'm, I'm not letting them in because I'm not sure if they're who they are. So I apologize, but I'm recording the meeting. So you'll be able to send it to them. So the same schedule that we've been using for virtual will be the same schedule for students who are face-to-face. -face. So nothing's changing as far as the schedule. So we'll still have morning meeting that starts at eight o'clock and then the day ends at 3.50. Water fountains. So water fountains have been replaced by water dispensers. So the students will no longer be using the water fountains. As a matter of fact, they're covered up. But students will use disposable cups or a personal water bottle. So if you want your child to bring a personal water bottle to get water, you can send that in the backpack as well. And dispensers will be sanitized hourly to ensure cleanliness. All student meals will be eaten in individual classrooms or cafeteria. The cafeteria has been arranged for social distancing. Students have designated seating, so we have it numbered. Yeah. Visitors will not be allowed to eat in the cafeteria with 
in the classrooms or with students in the cafeteria. So I know we had a great amount of parents that would come every day and eat with your students. So I apologize, but we will no longer be able to do that because visitors won't be allowed. Uh, the student meals will be boxed and sealed. And if you want your child to bring lunch, they can. I suggest that they bring it in a disposable bag so we can just throw it away. But if you want them to bring a lunch bag, that's fine too. Just make sure it's sanitized and inside the backpack as well. All right, so we have an updated visitor policy due to COVID-19. So there's no visitors except for people who are delivering things um, and things that have to go on about the business of our day. Uh, parents will not be allowed to visit for lunch, for birthday parties, to enter classrooms or the front foyer or walk your student to class. So again, all your goodbyes need to be said in the car and then we have people stationed to escort your child into the building. Please call us from the call button at the front door or from your cell phone um, if you need to speak with us or pick up a child early or something like that. Bus riders. So if your child rides the bus, the buses are gonna be running on Monday. Bus students, daycare vans will enter and exit the building through the west side entrance. So we'll have people back there helping and assisting and taking temperatures of those students as they enter and exit the building. Um, monitors will escort bus students during dismissal to load buses and daycare vans at the west exit. So if your child is daycare or bus, they'll be entering the west e uh, exit or west entrance and we'll make sure that we take their temperatures once they get there. Uh, www.lancasterisd.org is where you go for bus routes. I'll go ahead and show you how to get there. So when you get to the home screen, you click on parent portal. Miss Hagi, give me a thumbs up if you can see. Uh, I'm on, okay. Bus routes. says bus route information. If you click info finder here, you input your exact address and then it will tell you what your bus route is. We also emailed all the bus routes and you could probably ask your teacher, they have a copy of the bus routes as well. Here's the phone number for transportation if you have any questions and also wanna make sure you understand that pre-K students are not allowed to ride the school bus. Okay, go back to PowerPoint. Student dismissal. So the school day ends at 3.50. Parents, van drivers will remain in the car. So do not, re do not leave your vehicle when you're picking up. Um, if you have a question or something, call us on your phone. Or if you're picking up a kid early, call us on your phone or from that intercom. But we're asking you not to get out of your car. So students will be identified by a unique PIN number because we're using a new uh, app called Curb Smart. There's not anything you need to do as a parent right now with that app. We're gonna tell you about that later, but you do need to know your child's number because you're gonna receive a placard on Monday that has this number, but parents, your teachers are gonna share that number with you. So when you come through the line to pick up your car rider, just tell me the number or tell, we have four people, well, six people stationed strategically. You're gonna tell them that number and then we're gonna put it in and your child will come out. We're gonna use the app to do that. So if you don't know the number, it's fine. We just need to know your child's name, but after Monday, we're gonna give you a placard. We're gonna give you three of them on one sheet. So if you have multiple cars or multiple people picking up your child, you can share those. Um, parents will not be allowed to walk up to the building to pick up students. If you don't have a car, then we're asking that you stand at the marquee and we'll have someone bring your child to you. Make sure that you pick up students promptly. Again, 3.50 is our dismissal time. 
and be sure you have your hang tag for safe and smooth process. So we're asking for this for anyone. So if you are picking up at the marquee, uh, I would say you would still need that tag so that we can type in that number for your child and car riders especially. Students will not be released to individuals who are not on your contact list and again, we're using CurbSmart. You don't need to download that app or anything right now. We'll let you know when uh, you can see the, the parent side. Okay, let me look on here and see. I'm letting a few more people in. Okay. So all the rest of them I see guys just say iPhone. I'm... We'll, we'll send them the recording. Okay. All right, so just a few announcements. One announced Red Ribbon Week is coming up next week. So on Monday, we are reading out as we accept the challenge to be drug free. So your student can wear red tops and our red bottoms to school. So any red top, it doesn't have to be uniform, but it needs to be 90% red or any red bottoms as long as they're school appropriate on Monday. And then we do something each day of the week. We're having a pumpkin carving decorating contest. Your student can win a cash prize October the 28th. Um, what I need is for you to take a picture and submit that to your teacher by 3 p.m. on the 28th. So you can start submitting those pictures right now if you have them. But make sure your student is in the photo and it is a cash prize. Okay. We're also having on October the 29th a virtual fall festival. So we're gonna have virtual games, costume contests, storytelling. That's on Thursday, October 29th, 5 to 6.30. Just like we shared the link for this meeting, we'll share the link for that as well to join the fall festival. So we're asking that you follow us on social media because I'm always, or we're always putting out very important information on our social media. So follow us on Twitter at HES Lancaster. Teachers, if you can put that in the chat. Facebook, Houston ES Lancaster, and then on our uh, on www.lancasterisd.org, we have our school website, Houston Elementary. So all of this information that I'm telling you, like the newsletter and all that kind of stuff, it's on our website as well. So what we ask for you parents is that we're moving into a transition into hybrid learning. So just imagine teaching virtual students and also teaching kids that are in your room. So this is something new and different that we're embarking upon. So we're just asking you to have patience. So I put this quote here, have patience, all things are difficult before they become easy. Also, I wanna announce a Boy Scout interest meeting. It's at seven o'clock and Ms. Smith is gonna drop the link in the chat. So if you're interested in the Boy Scout meeting tonight at seven, she's gonna drop that link in the chat. Miss uh, Vasquez, you had a announcement too. Can you go ahead and mention yours? In English or in Spanish? You can do it both. Do it in both. Um, on Tuesday, Tuesday night, October 27th at 6 p.m., uh, the bilingual and ESL program will be hosting a technology meeting for parents. Um, pre-K through 12th grade. Um, and that will be sent out by teachers um, through their communication um, dojo services or however they communicate. And um, in Espanol. El martes, el 27 de octubre, vamos a tener una junta para padres sobre la tecnología. Um, revises la forma de comunicación con sus maestras para que puedan ver el código para entrar a la junta. Gracias. All right, thank you, Ms. Vasquez. Okay. Um, so now's the time where you can um, ask questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen.
And there's a little thing down at the bottom that says reactions. And you can raise your hand on the reactions. So just so I don't have people talking over, or you can put your question in the chat. Because I know you have a lot of questions. All right, let me scroll back up. On the right. Ms. Stevenson, there is yeah. a, a question from uh, the Brent family about their eighth grader picking up a first grader. How will we proceed with that? Yes, ma'am. Oh, so is he walking, walking up? He's getting off of a school bus and uh -huh. he will, he, in the past, he have walked up to get his younger sibling, but he's getting off of a bus. So he would need to be uh, at the marquee and we'll escort her to him at the marquee. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And, and Miss Brent, I know him and I know her, and I'll be on that corner too. So I'll I'll keep an eye out too. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, can they bring their own face shields? Yes. If you want to bring, uh, this is a miracles parent. If you want to bring the face shield back and forth, that's fine. But uh, we do have a place to keep the face shield. We just we know with younger kids, it's kind of hard to keep up with those kind of things. So we want to make sure that face shields were here on campus. Thank you. Okay. We have people um, strategically placed outside, people call unloaders, monitors. So they will help any student that needs help with their school supplies. And like I said, you don't have to bring everything on Monday. We're not expecting that because a lot of the learning that they're going to be doing is going to be taking place still on the computer. So don't think that you have to bring everything on that list on Monday. So don't load the kids down with everything on Monday. Just bring a few at a time. Give them a seat. Um, Mr. Lawrence, if your child doesn't have a uniform, just contact myself or Miss Neely and we'll talk you through uh, what we can do about uniform. But can I can I just uh, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Okay, so just I just saying I don't know if I speak for everybody else or anything of that sort, but I mean for as the kids like for us not to be going, and then for us now having to go back to school, um, and then just being truthfully honest with you, I mean, COVID-19, it did recede, but now it's back on the rise. Like, how is that supposed to work? And then do y'all expect the kids to starting off come by Monday to have uniforms? As I said, um, the uniform is just a white. Well, actually, on Monday they can they don't have to wear a uniform; they can just wear red, a red shirt and red bottoms. So actually, all next week they don't have to come in the uniform. We have, you know, they can just wear red. But like I said, if you if your child doesn't have uniforms, if you contact me or Miss Neely, and Miss Neely, you can put your message, or your email in the chat, and we can talk to you uh, individually about uniforms. Yes, but when I'm <clears throat> what I'm trying to can y'all please be quiet. Oh, yeah. Uh what I'm pretty much saying is if no, I have three kids that go to Houston Elementary. Mm -hmm. I have a fifth grader, I have a second grader, and I got uh, I got a printed uh, kindergarten. For me to have to go to the store and have to go ahead and buy all of them uniforms. So Mr. Lawrence, what I'm saying is you don't have to do that. Just but email if, us. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. Ray, Ray's mom, you have your hand up. Go ahead and unmute. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I buy a Ray a uh, computer at home. I never asked in the in the district the computer. Yeah. So I'm worried about he don't have a one to take to the, do you, you can provide one over there or? Yes, we're gonna provide him with a device here at school. So just oh, okay. his personal one at home to, to use at home. And then okay. we have one for him here at school. Miss Hoggett, go ahead. Miss Lopez, I have one ready for him on my desk, charging at the moment. He'll get it Monday morning. Wow. Thank you so much and I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Miss Brent, yes, he'll need that hang tag number. But um, 
so asked, estoy, aquí estoy, aquí estoy, güey. Pero aquí tienen, aquí so tienen. So ask the uh, Demi's teacher what the number is. And Miss Stevenson, actually, it was for my son. He's in eighth grade, so he don't oh, have okay. a So, But he'll be at the marquee. Okay, Thank sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Miss Adams, you're asking about learning styles. Whatever your whatever your kindergarten teacher, whoever their homeroom teacher is, that teacher is teaching virtual and the kids that are in the room. There's not one person for virtual and one person for uh, in person. Their teachers are doing both. Okay, some of y'all already asked the question. Let's see. A miracle has the hand up. Go ahead and unmute. Yes, Ms. Stevenson. Um, how will they be staying in that one class throughout the day, changing their subjects, or would they be rotating classes? Um, what grade is a miracle? Fourth grade. <laughs> fourth grade. Every 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 grade level is staying in the classroom. Okay. So they won't be moving around. The only time they'll move is to go to lunch. Okay. Perfect. That's what. Uh -huh. I'm okay. Or maybe Thank if you. they need to go to the bathroom. The restroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Can we bring our own lunch? Yes, you can. Uh, Miss Tamisha Hill, you have your hand up. Yes, my question is, could you describe as far as in with the classroom setup? Uh, my baby girl is in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So I want to know as far as in, are the seats uh, six feet apart? Do they have like uh, partitioners up between the seats or how would it work? What's the setup looking like? So the, the, we are socially distancing the furniture and most of those classics, especially in the younger grades, you said your child is in kinder, have mm -hmm. maybe like four or five kids in that room. So okay. we, don't, we don't have a lot of kids coming back. I think the most that we have is in a higher grade and it's 11. And still that's, it gives us plenty of room to social distance. And okay. so they'll be separated. We have put in, we're trying to look for partitions and trying to put in an order and the district is looking for partitions for us. We won't have those on Monday, but the children will be distanced and they'll have face shields and masks. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh, let's see if I see any. Uh, Ray Lopez, mom, you still have your hand up. Did you still have a question? No, ma'am, thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Let me go to the chat. There was one question, Ms. Stevenson, about the lunch. Is the lunch going to be cold? Uh-uh, quiet. What was it, Ms. Vasquez? Lunch. Will lunch be hot or cold? It's a hot lunch. But it'll just be like in a to-go box. But they'll eat it sitting in the cafeteria. But it will be a hot lunch. Ms. Black has a question. Okay, go ahead. Ms. Oh, Black. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Stevens. Um, I have two questions. Um, just to be uh, specific, did you did the um, policy say that mask had to be solid colored only? No, ma'am. Okay, so Any they can mask. be patterned. It doesn't no, I was just saying cloth or a uh, medical mask. It could be mm -hmm. any pattern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, um, can children uh, who have to, with, with the learning devices and, and, you know, I'm worried about my daughter having a lot of strain on her back with this backpack and mm -hmm. all the items. Can mm -hmm. she bring a roller to the school? To, can, can kids bring that? Yeah. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Like the, the rolling yes. backpacks. Yeah, she uh -huh. can bring that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have their hand up? Guys that y'all can see? They no, aren't. A, Go ahead, Miss Hoggett. There is a question in the chat from Ashland. Uh huh. That, oh, what do we do after a week or two if we change our minds? Um, what I'm asking um, from Ashland is that you, if you if you decide that you want to change, you need to email Damian Gray at LancasterISD.org. Uh, can somebody put that in the chat? If you change your mind, that's who you need to uh, talk to. 
Done. Okay. Harmonica. All right, I was trying to get my phone out from mute. Um, my question one was the same question that you just answered because you saying email Damien and I think the issue is if they go to school for a week or two and then we say, you know, we're not feeling it, do we still email him or do we let you guys know? That was question number one. Question number two, uh, with all the symptoms checker, checker you have, they say if they develop a fever in week two or week three, mm -hmm. um, do we contact the school nurse or do we contact their teacher? What is the step for that? The protocol is to fill out that form that I showed you, that COVID-19 response form, but you can always call the nurse and let us know. Make sure you keep that child at home. And then they do online learning for we just let them know that they're gonna do online learning until they feel better or well if they're something? if they're considered if they're sick and they're face to face, they'll be absent. So if if a child is sick, it's just like regular school when, when kids got sick, they're absent if they don't come. So if you're a face to face and you're not physically here, then they will be counted absent. So it's like we can't toggle between the virtual and the face-to-face. -face. So it's like if, they vert, if they're if they face-to-face and they don't come to the building, they're absent. But you're saying if they come to school that day and they have a 99.4 a fever, or or I mean, to, to us, that's not really a fever, but we know with COVID, that's considered a high number. Mm -hmm. And they can't come to school that day. They're being counted absent, and they can sit at home and do that same learning, and they're not even sick. So that's a little bit confusing. Well, the temperature is what's causing them to be at home. So there's a reason why they have a temperature. So they may not be showing symptoms, but the temperature is the reason why the child will, will be at home. But each of those cases are handled on a case-by-case -case basis. So once you fill out that form, there's a, uh, there's a nurse for the district and uh, someone from our parent liaison services that will contact you and they will basically make the decision on, you know, does the child come back to school or so on. But if they're a face-to-face -face student and they're not physically in the building, we do have to count them absent. Okay, thank you. You And your first question, tell me the first one again. My first question was the same as the other one. Uh, what we were asking is just say, if they come to, week, to school for a week or two. Oh, and, and you wanna and change? Then, yeah. Right. Are we contacting him? Does that say we email him on a Tuesday and he may not respond to a Thursday? I mean, what do do we keep our child in school until he responds back? He's been pretty quick about responding, but yes, go ahead and contact me or the child's teacher. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Miss Black, you had a question? Uh, yes. Will the, will the pre-K children be going outside at any point in time to, you know, get some fresh air, play? So what I've told the teachers is that the students won't go to the playground. Mm -hmm. But what I've said to them, like, for example, there's a pre-K class that has like three students. They could definitely go outside with the kids, you know, and have them social distance in an area but every, like, how we used to do it where all pre-K went outside and played, that's not happening. Yes, yes. But I have told the teachers that they can step outside with their group because they're all together anyway. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as long as they stay with that particular group and away mm -hmm. from everybody and away from the actual pro, uh, playground, yes. then I've told them that I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see, I don't see any more hands up. Y'all let me know if y'all see any more hands. I'm going trying to go through the questions. Ms. Araceli Hernandez has her hand up. Go ahead. Uh, if my daughter have an appointment, where I supposed to send the note to the teacher by paper or we can get a number to call and let them know uh -huh. how we can do it? You can call 972. 218-1516, somebody put that in the chat. Or you can email Esmeralda Elizalde at LancasterISD.org. All right, thank you. And we'll put that email in the chat too. 
Let me start at the bottom and go up. <laughs> uh, okay. Y'all let me know if there's something in the chat that I haven't answered. I think, I think my staff is doing a pretty good job. So are there are there any other questions? You can just raise your hand. There is one. Mr. Uh, it says Shay Shay. Do you have a question? Okay. Y'all see somebody else? One parent asked, uh, will they leave the textbooks at school on Monday or will they bring them back and forth? They, they'll bring them at school, but sometimes they might have to take a textbook home to do homework or, or tear out the sheet and take it home. Ms. Brent, Ms. Brent, you have a question? Yes, I'm sorry. I do. I just want to um, just make sure I'm correct. So if I decide that my child is not going to return to face-to-face, -to -face, it can go back virtual learning, um, but I would need to email Damian Gray but can I essentially, technically, if you don't respond to me to the first day, can my kids just log on to the Google Meets with their teacher, just log on um, virtually in class? Do I need to wait on some type of approval? Yeah, just give us a heads up. Okay. Because we need to know that and that you have already emailed him. Because um, he's, like I said, he's been pretty quick about letting us know. But we have to make that official for attendance purposes. Okay, because I just want to ensure, because I work at a school also, and um, and I know I work in Dallas, and we do have some issues in Dallas. So mm -hmm. I just want to ensure, you know, at any moment, it may be a split, you know, a quick decision right. for me not to send them. Yeah, just give us a call, and um, and and as you're calling, email him, and then okay. we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, thank you so much. Uh-huh. Any other questions? Yes, teachers are screened daily as well. They've been, we've been back since September 28th and they're screened every day. Um, if a positive case arises, then uh, we let you know. Um, also the district lets you know and contacts anyone who has been in contact with a positive case. Um, so yes, we notify you right away. Um, and it usually comes during email, but every day there's an email that goes out from the district telling you what cases we've had. And so far it's been either zero or one. Uh, if I have a son in fifth grade and another in third grade, can I leave them in the same place? Yes, so they'll go through the third grade door. Are they going all week or just certain days? Yes, they come to school every day if they're face to face. If the students are not switching classes, will it be different teachers in and out? The only teacher that comes in and out is the specials teacher. But their homeroom teacher is the only teacher that stays in there and the specials teacher. Uh, Shay Shay, you, you raised your up. hand. Did you raise your hand? No. Go ahead, Ms. Gamino. Oh, no. I seen Ms. Araceli Hernandez with her hand up. Oh, go ahead. Okay, if uh, a student come up positive, you will notify the whole class or you will not notify the whole school. And if they gonna let us know what grade, so we can kinda know if uh, we decide not to send them yeah. or if we have to take it, like out the students have to take a test to return. Right, so we notify, so let me give you an example. So this happened at the high school with a certain group of people. And so just that group of people was notified that there was a positive case. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the same thing. If it's a class, we'll let the class know, but we'll also let the entire school know that we had a positive case on our campus. Okay. So we, we're very uh, transparent about that. And so you won't ever have to question it. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. So uh, Ms. Black was saying that she noticed that the daily emails don't specify the cases. 
But if you're at that school where the cases are, you're getting a separate email. Okay. So for example, my daughter attends the high school. So yes, I get that daily email that comes, but if there's a positive case and somebody was at the high school, I got that email too separately. I have a question. Yes. Can my son, uh, he can uh, take to school the small Germex or you provide Germex in, over there in the school? The the hand sanitizer? Yes, ma'am, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have that. We have plenty oh, okay. of it. Okay. Let me show you. Let me show you what we have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. You're Every prepared. classroom has. I think that y'all get two of these a piece. Yeah. Okay. And so mm -hmm. we have gallons, and they replace this as we need it. But if okay. you want to put his own hand sanitizer in his backpack, that's fine too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And by the supplies, I have to ask the teacher first or I'll wait Just talk Monday. to the teacher and see what they need on the first day. I don't expect for you guys to go out to the store and buy everything on that list. Oh, okay. okay. You know, my like I said, my daughter's at the high school. I sent her to school with paper and a pencil on the first day and then oh. let the teacher tell them what they need. Thank you. But so those much. required items, mm -hmm. like the mask, the, the uh, textbook, the laptop, the charger, those are important. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, if there are no other questions, thank you so much guys for coming out. Let me share my screen one more time. So I wanna thank you so much for coming. If you have more questions, you can email me at Tatanisha Stevenson at LancasterISD.org. But I will stay on for any parent that wants to ask a question. But at this time, you are dismissed. Thank you guys so much. Jonathan Lawrence has a quick question. Okay, Mr. Lawrence. Okay, so I need to ask a quick question. So I have, I'm most likely gonna send my kindergarten and my second grader. So how do y'all plan on, just out of curiosity, how do y'all plan on enforcing the mask and the face mask on a day-to-day -day basis? And then when they on the bus, how do we plan on strategically handling that part? Just out of curiosity. So when a child comes to school, anything we ask them to do, just, just like anything we ask them to wear, like dress code <laughs> or anything like that, then there are consequences if they refuse to do so. So we're asking you as the parent to help support us by kind of practicing right now with your child on the appropriate way to wear a mask. And then when they get to school, the, the teacher will also make sure. But from what I've heard from other schools and other school districts that have kids, it hasn't really been an issue. The kids keep their mask on. So the teacher asks them to keep their mask on, then they're going to do it. Now, if they don't do it, then it becomes a consequence and we'll contact the parent and let you know. Okay, what you want to ask? Thank you, Miss Adams. Uh, do we have, if we have three kids that go to one school, do we have an option to send certain kids to the school? Yes, you don't have to send all of them. Okay, because, you know, it's a, it's an issue being at home, especially with a because they don't adhere to the parent, you know, at home saying sit down, you know, the, the, the kid, the two younger ones, the second grader and the kindergarten, they're just always up, 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 up. Okay. So that's kind of the issue that we're having. That's why we're trying to, and then we also have a fifth grader, but okay. we don't mind her being at home because she knows what she's supposed to do with these right. other two. I just didn't know if we had to send them all to school. No, you or don't. If we had option. Okay. It's completely up to you. If you if you want to send just the kindergartner, you could. It's just totally up to you. Okay. Okay. And, and again, for the uniform, what if we can't get, get the uniform? I, I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. Lawrence, don't worry about the uniform. All right, but okay, I'm just making sure. Don't I worry am. about the uniform. We got you on the uniform. All right, because I got a lot of kids. Man. Okay, we understand. Stuff. You okay. Y'all, that's because I'm calling a lot of money now. It's, it's going to be all right. We got you. <laughs> Jeez, I got you. 
Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Lawrence, Lawrence we, just, we just need to know the sizes. That's all. <laughs> all right, I'm going to send you all the, all the shoe sizes too because it's a whole lot. Of Mr. Lawrence, just email me, okay? Just email me. Yeah. All right, sister, I got you, baby. I, I, know, I, I know I said that in the beginning of this meeting. I said it like six times to email us. I know I did. All right. Well, so this, okay, I'm sorry. Y'all got to understand. I, it's a lot of them. It's a whole bunch of them. Y'all just don't understand. Okay, we got it. You got a lot of kids. We understand. All right. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Are they allowed to take the masks off at any time just to get a breath of fresh air? Because they're hard to breathe in these masks. They can, they can do it for lunch, of course. And then if they're in the classroom and they're social distanced, mm -hmm. then it's possible for the kid to be able to, like, while they're sitting at their desk. Okay, but, so... Do they need to inform the teacher or they can just take it off? Yeah, the teacher, the teacher will will let the kids know. Okay. When it's okay to do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ms. Stevenson. Okay. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. Um Sylvia. Go ahead, Sylvia. Okay, okay. Um, my mom has a question about if my sister has to have a vaccine or any vaccine. Uh, contact Nurse Demery. I'll put her email in the uh, chat. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is Miracle's mom. I just wanted to confirm with the laptops. So they will bring their laptops backwards and forward every yes, day. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, and is it okay if we put, like, I know it's, um, I know they already have the laptops assigned to them through the administration. Mm hmm but is it okay if we put like a little sticker or something like that on their charger and sure um, laptop just to make sure? Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. a great and idea. Then, okay, perfect. And then I know this might be crazy, but just how does the bathroom part work? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't think nobody asked about this. It's probably right. done, but. So the and younger kids have restrooms inside the classroom. And then the older kids will have a specific time where there's social distances and they go to the restroom and we only have certain stalls open for social okay. distance inside the bathroom. Um, so they'll be social distancing and as a class, the teacher will take them uh, and, and monitor them as they go to the bathroom as a class. Okay, perfect. So that's one of the two times they'll leave the room is for a restroom and to eat lunch. And then as far as the water, bo water bottle, because I know Miracle, she has these little containers. It, everything needs to be disposable if she's bringing her lunch. Any juices, anything like that. That's what I'm suggesting. Okay. Just so we won't be, you know, bringing household items back and forth that mm -hmm. just adds to a contamination. But Makes I'm sense. suggesting that they bring something disposable. Okay. Perfect. Because she has these little thermals she likes to put her drinks in and stuff like that. But that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you guys so much. Right. I do appreciate all your hard work. You're welcome. Thank you. Parents, you're, you're dismissed. You are free to go unless you have a question. <laughs>